longer that 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 UNRWA's help is still necessary. Mm. Um, and there is this this uh, this fear that you know, um, not just concerning UNRWA, but generally that that you know that we are kind of creating a a charity society where you know we give a lot of money um, to to help you know things like kind of. Um, reconstructing houses mm. and putting giving Palestinians food and things like that without the necessary political effort as Chris said to actually stop these injustices occurring mm. so I mean I, th there, there's this this sense of, of bitterness that you know well you know it's there's this black hole of charity that you, you mm. we can keep throwing money in but as long as there's no political effort to stop those injustices you, you're kind of it's it's almost money that's that's just being thrown away because we're going to continue to have to to support these people. Mm. So you, you ha and this is a similar issue, for instance, in Africa, where people feel resentful that you know that that people are only seen as charity cases mm. and not people that can actually be self-sufficient if they're given the necessary rights and means. So I think that it's a, it's a general um, resentment, not a, a, an anger directed specifically at UNRWA. I mean, as Chris said, without UNRWA, people would literally go hungry. It is mm. as basic and urgent as that. But 664 years on now since, since the Nakba, UNRWA's uh, as needed as it was in 1948. Thank you for your insights again, Sherry. Thank and you. thanks very much, Chris Gunnis, for joining us from UNRWA. Well, students at a London university recently found an emotive way to express their solidarity with Palestinians under occupation. This report has more. They wore military-style uniforms, held plastic guns, and made students on their way to lectures line up with their IDs ready. We're lining up and we're tr just trying to get to our classes. These are Goldsmiths University students in London making a point about cruel treatment and discrimination against Palestinians. What's going on? She needs to be checked. She speaks... Um, well, why are you Arabic? leaving her like that on the floor? She's from Iraq, so we need to check out why she's here. Don't trust her. I spoke to some of the pupils at the university about the growing support for Palestine amongst the student community there. I definitely think there is a, a change among people my generation. There's a general acknowledgement that Israel is uh, constantly violating human rights and that's backed up by findings of like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, a lot of these international organisations. And we've seen growing support for the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement that was actually called for by the Palestinians. Um, it's really strong on our campus here in Goldsmiths and I think that's an idea that's uh, spreading. How far do you feel that the responsibility lies on your shoulders to stand by Palestinians? As an American I, I feel that given that my country is more responsible than any other on the planet for um, perpetrate, for enabling the state of Israel to perpetrate its crimes daily against um, the population that it occupies. I see the Palestinian people as an oppressed people and I think there comes a point where I'm human before I'm British and that always comes first and Britain did occupy Palestine for such a long time and so I partly feel responsible that perhaps Britain definitely did chicken out of Palestine so to speak. I think it's really really important when you look at suffering in the world, that the world is only made a better place through changes and I think it's very much on our generation's shoulders to really, really work together to make this world a better place, a world without nuclear weapons. The students at Goldsmiths participate in demonstrations, hold events on campus, spread the word amongst family and friends and make films with messages of solidarity to fight for a just future for Palestinians. Meanwhile, in a very different protest, this week in Gaza, internationals and Palestinian activists were fired upon with live ammunition by Israeli forces. Joining me now down the line from Gaza is Nathan Stuckey, one of the protesters who was there. Uh, Nathan, welcome to Remember Palestine. Can you tell everyone, please, uh, why you were protesting and where the protest was held? Sure, we were protesting north of Beit Noon. The entire border of Gaza has been declared a 300-meter no-go zone by Israel. For the last three and a half years, an organization in Beit Hanun called the Beit Hanun Local Initiative has been organizing protests against the no-go zone. And so for this protest, we walked from basically the border checkpoint at Erez to east of Beit Hanun, where two young men were killed last week. Um, and uh, how many of you were collected together and how dangerous is that stretch of land? Can you just describe what that stretch of land is like? 
Uh, there were about 40 of us at the protest. The area to the north of Beit Hanun is, uh, I mean, it's completely scarred by bulldozers, basically. It used to be a fertile area full of, full of orchards, full of trees, full of fields, full of houses. That's all been destroyed. Basically, there are hills, there are, uh, I don't know, every couple of feet there are drop-offs where bulldozers have just left giant gashes in the ground. It's, uh, it's quite dangerous. Most people, frankly, nobody goes near it. It's, it's, uh, the Israelis have decided that they can shoot anybody who enters the area. And to the east of Beit Hanun is even more dangerous, actually. Within like a kilometer of the border is really extremely dangerous. Almost nobody goes there. Um, but, let me uh, just ask you, so, so um, sure. as you, you went into what's called the buffer zone, the, the, this bulldozed area, um, what was the reaction of the Israelis behind their, um, their checkpoint? Uh, as soon as we approached the buffer zone, they began shooting live ammunition at us and tear gas, which is actually quite strange. They don't usually use tear gas in Gaza. Usually they resort directly to live ammunition. So there was an improvement then? No, no. Well, they were also shooting live ammunition. It was just uh, it was quite surprising. I was told by the organizers of the demonstration that in three and a half years, they've never had tear gas shot at them, only live ammunition before. Now, this, this actually, this tear gas is often nerve gas as well. We've seen serious um, repercussions in the West Bank with people suffering um, seizures, um, and it's similar to what's being used in Tahrir Square. Um, how worried are locals about this, uh, th this new tear gas being used? Uh, to be honest, I, I think that I doubt that we'll see it in the future. We haven't seen it in the past. Usually they just shoot live ammunition at us, which frankly, is, I think, more scary. Of course it is. And um, what's your message to people watching uh, about uh, what, what your, your, uh, the people you work with would like to, to see done for the people of Beit Hanun? I think the first thing they would like to emphasize, people should come to Gaza, see for yourself. Come and, uh, come and work with them. Come and volunteer in Gaza. Go to, the, go to the buffer zones. Go work with the farmers and work with the fishermen. Thanks very much. Um, that's all we have time for. It's a great message to leave on. Time now for our weekly look at the growing global movement against Zionism. Anti-Zionist Orthodox Jews took to the streets of New York, dressed in concentration camp clothing, to protest against the attitude of the Israeli government towards Palestinians. Zionism and the State of Israel is totally transforming what it means to be Jewish. They are a nationalism, a base materialism. It is a corrupt, it is a rebellion against God and they've hijacked and kidnapped the Star of David. They've hijacked our name, Israel. The large crowd that included all generations of Jews marched from the Israeli embassy to the United Nations headquarters. Londoners are getting ready for a five-mile challenge in the winter walk for Gaza at the end of January. The organisers, Muslim Hands, aim to beat the £60,000 collected last year to keep funding improvements of the El Dura hospital in the Strip. The goal for the 2012 walk is to use the money raised at the event to build gastroenterology, cardiology and respiratory sections at the paediatric facility. The work of the Palestinian filmmaker Iyad Bernat, Five Broken Cameras, is one of the 12 productions competing in the World Documentary category at Sundance Film Festival in Utah, United States. The documentary tells the personal story of Iyad Bernat as a farmer in the West Bank village of Berlin and his non-violent resistance against Israel's settlement expansion. After years of filming the struggle at Bil'ain, Bernat joined efforts with Israeli director and filmmaker Guy Davidi. Together they created a 90-minute documentary which has already won an award at the International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam 2011. And that's all we have time for in this week's Remember Palestine. Join us next time for more from the front line of the New Middle East. Goodbye. <laughs>